Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. Um, as I mentioned, I may have mentioned, I know that I've mentioned this in other LPs, but soon I will be moving, so uploads will become spotty for a time. I think I should have made a video about this, just saying, hey, uploads will become spotty. Uh, because they will. What am I doing? Captain Bird. Is what I'm supposed to be doing in here? Because it feels that way. Gerald. God, I don't remember this. Is this just a thing of like, this is the quickest way out of Bruma, technically? God, I probably did this last time, right before I stopped. This is what I get for, you know, recording like I do. Um, it's not been that long between recording sesh. Not as long as it usually is, that is. Um, I only recorded this, like, not even two full weeks ago. I mentioned at the start of my last recording sessions that I was like, yeah, so I haven't uploaded in a I haven't recorded anything in a month. I've, you know, I've come out of a coma. <laughs> like, my arm is numb, my, my eyes are, are all wide, my beard isn't combed. Where am I going? Thought this was the exit. Can I travel from here? Oh. Cool. That's fine. Um, so I was thinking about this game and like, I don't know if I want to compare it to the other ones. I know that that's weird, but like, everyone's like, oh man, Fallout New Vegas versus Fallout 4. Which one is the true successor to Fallout 3? You know, Fallout 3 New Vegas and 4, who is the successor of the classic Fallouts? And like... Man, if you don't want to see guys having the same argument ten times in a row every day, don't visit any forum where Fallout New Vegas is available. But, like, this is, this is weird because I almost don't know if I want to compare this to, like, Skyrim and Morrowind. Because Skyrim and Morrowind, and Daggerfall for that matter, all... All four of those, no, all three of those, all three of those are, um, sorry, I was trying to remember if anything else counted. Um, all three of those are just, like, fabric of reality stuff. You know? Like, the story here in Oblivion is actually, s like, smaller in comparison. Because in, in Arena, the first Elder Scrolls, it's like, there are eight divines, the number of divines that there are eight, the number of uh, eight is the number of the divines, eight there shall be, seven is uh, too low by one, and nine is too high by the same amount, ten is right out. Am I stuck in this rock? Oh, oh yeah. Good job, Todd. Um... One moment. <laughs> um, yeah, the divines working that way in arena is a whole thing. And then in Daggerfall, it's like the ninth divine, which will affect the reality of everything. And in Morrowind, uh, Dagother is going to replace the totality of existence with himself. And then in Skyrim, Alduin wants to destroy the totality of existence. And like, at its height, just from what I've ascertained and what I know, 
um, Elder Scrolls Online and this game, Oblivion, both have, like, the fabric of Mundus, but just Mundus. Like, granted, it's a big dimension, and it's the one where all the characters live, but it's just one dimension. Like, all of them are... Like, existence, reality is going to be fine. <laughs> I know that that's kind of weird to say, but, like... Also, just because, like, one realm of reality is taken over by a Daedric Prince doesn't mean anything. Like, immediately afterwards, anyone else could take it and then remake it. Like, why wouldn't the Aedra do that? It might be shitty for a little bit, but, you know. And it's weird because, like, <laughs> I am talking like... like this is because of the, the weird power scaling that uh, Elder Scrolls has going on. But, like... This is, a, this is a game where, you know, all of... All of my plan of existence, all of my reality might be destroyed by an Elder God. And I'm like, wow, these stakes are pretty low. And, and granted, that's just a thing of like, by the way, I mean comparing them in terms of like comparing the story. But also like, I feel like I'm meeting a smaller cast of characters. Like part of that is because they wanted to put Sean Bean in the game. And so it's like, well, if we put Sean fucking Bean in the game, then every character should be, you know, almost arrayed in closeness to Bean. But, like, because Sean Bean is the main guy that I'm talking to, and I feel like I'm only talking to that one guy, and the other characters that I've met are, like, not to shit on them, but, like, they feel like bit characters. I just, it's, it's so interesting that, like, the stakes are, like, still comparatively high. And yet, I don't feel like I really want to compare this game to the other games in terms of story. Like, I, I feel like the stakes are just so much lower. And, like, also, that's not a bad thing. Because, like, you compare, like, The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings, and, like, I can still get as emotional about Lord of the Rings as I do about The Hobbit, you know? Like, stakes being lower or higher is not a bad thing. Or even a good thing, you know? It just is. And there's a lot of writers... I. This is a, a problem that I understand in so much as it is a Dragon Ball Z problem. And I usually refer to this as like a Dragon Ball Z power scaling problem. Though I relay it to my wife by means of Supernatural. Because both Dragon Ball and uh, Supernatural have a problem of like... Okay, so last season we blew up a planet... Where do we go that's bigger than that? What about a sun? Can we blow up a sun? Um, and like Dragon Ball Z, you know, blowing up planets is now the thing. So the next guy is going to blow up a planet and he's going to make it look really easy. And to him, it'll be really easy. Uh, do I have a torch ready? I do. And so that's, that's the escalation. And then, like, then it's a guy who can destroy galaxies. And then it's a guy who can destroy, or rather, one star, and then galaxies, and then universes, you know? And sometimes, because it's all within the same, like, thing. Like, it works in Gurren Lagann, because Gurren Lagann is one show that was built from the ground up from day one to have, okay, at some point, we're going to be fighting with galaxies. We're going to be throwing galaxies at each other like shurikens. You know, like, Lensman and, and Gurren Lagann, like, that's fine, just because the arms race was intended from day one. But sometimes in Dragon Ball Z, it's like, okay, so gods are real. Like, a dude who is not just, like, titled god. Wow. A uh, classical, like... That's funny. Ugh. <sighs> 
My cat's in my boxes. Cats, as you know, love boxes, but in as much as I'm moving, he's, you know, going nuts over there because there's a shitload of boxes. Oh, Lord. Um, and DBZ still remains fun, but, like, relaying it to Supernatural, you know, in Supernatural, there's a thing of, like, okay, we've spent a few seasons building up to fighting Satan. We have another season now. What do we do? Oh, turns out Satan's cousin is, is real, and he's even stronger than Satan. Why did we never hear about him? Oh, no reason. And, like, the fact of, like, where the hell did this guy come from? Why didn't we hear about him before? That's not really a problem in Elder Scrolls, I will say. Oh, Undead Blade. Yeah, I was like, oh, you have a katana. You're a blade. Yeah. Ah. That's cool. I like that. <clears throat> I'm a little of the Ansei. Uh, yeah, that's fine. This is, it's all right. Just a generic helmet, you know? I'm sorry if you can hear the cat in the box next to me. If it's distracting you. Um... Yeah, because, like, I think Alduin is mentioned as early as Morrowind as just, like, a thing. Also, shouts are mentioned in Morrowind. Oh, I came from here, didn't I? Yeah, I think I gotta turn around. Shouts and the fact that Nords fight with shouts are actually mentioned as early as Morrowind. And so, like, for some people, it's like, what the fuck is this new thing? It's like, you hit the power button and you, and you yell really loud, and that's the new thing in Skyrim. What the hell? Um... But for some people, it's like, oh, this is that thing that they talked about in the 36 Lessons of Vivek, you know, now 10-ish years ago or something. Where, you know, Nords are so powerful that they can just speak an attack, you know, like their words are, are an attack. And they're called tongues because, you know, the warriors, the, the important thing about the warrior is their mouth. Dude. Um, I know I'm backtracking now, but I got turned around in there. Oof. Oh, yeah, it's that trap. If I hit a door and it takes me outside, I'll know I've gone too far. No, um, I am aware that I am going backwards now, but I'm uh, unsure of where I should be going. Okay, yeah, outside. Maybe this is a thing where, like, there's a secret little hatch somewhere that I haven't hit. What's the point of this? Oh, I guess it's collapsed, so that would have been something. All right. I'll shut my mouth. Environmental storytelling right there. You know, who am I to complain? Okay, so this is that stuff from before. And then this leads down here. This has nothing. This is just a little... I guess it's like a place where you put your coats for when you're coming down here. Tiber Septim and his guys hung their coats there, I suppose. But yeah, like, um... The concept of a, of a cult of a Daedra is like, yeah, of course, we know that those are a thing in, in Morrowind. And if somebody gave the... Oh, this thing. Doi. Yeah, I kept putting my back to this because I would, like, turn and I wouldn't see this. Yeah. Whoops. It's all right. You got to hear more of my dulcet tones. Hmm. So these are the ghosts of blades. I can't see any recognizable facial features. Oh, it's a skeleton with like skin on it. 
like translucent skin. That's cool. I like that. That's radical. Very dark in here. Okay. So I came in through Sankator. I came in through this one? Sankator, yeah. Because I clicked on it and it just said, hey, you're going into Sankator. And then that one said Hall of Judgment. This one says Prison. Why don't we put some juice on there, huh? Oh, wait, they're in here, right? Are they in here? They are. Actually, we'll do that later. Wait, how much is this? 300. Oh, we can put it on there. This will fill it up, so that's fine. Not wasteful. Do I have a soul trap yet? I have, so I have these of it. Eh, I'll switch it off. I, I'm probably not going to get the chance to... Uh, like, proper soul trap a ghost. Or it'll be an awesome soul and I've missed out on an amazing ability. Warden Kastav. Oh, you're just a skeleton now. Steel mace. Warden's key. Radical. My kitty cat's crying. Hell yeah. Didn't think I would have a chance anyway. I have proven to be pretty inept at this lockpicking minigame. Um, See, so yeah, I don't really think that um, Elder Scrolls has a problem of like, where, who is this douchebag? You know, where did he come from? Why are we only just now hearing about him? Because like... When someone's like, uh, why have I never heard about this guy? Someone's like, oh, uh, clearly because you didn't, like, go to, you know, Piss Creek Manor in, in this backwater shithole in Oblivion. And then you opened this drawer and found this book inside and then read it. Duh, idiot. Because, like, I do remember seeing complaints about um, the shouts. Jesus, this place is sprawling. It's like building a skyscraper. You got to start at the bottom and work up. Um, but yeah, because like there have been times when people have been like, where is this from? And people are like, right here, bro. And, and it's, they cite a specific example of, uh, this thing that they describe being mentioned, you know? And like I met, like, like I said, like my favorite example of that is with the, the tongues in Morrowind versus the, the Thulm and the Shout in Skyrim. And, like, the way that, um, Tiber Septum's deification into Talos, as well as, like, his actual deeds versus what was claimed that he did, that looks like progress, so we'll do it later. Okay, cool. I don't want to miss things, so I'm going to backtrack through here. What if I miss the book that describes what the villain of Elder Scrolls Six is going to be like? You know? Not to put too fine a point on what I'm saying. But yeah, um, see, I don't really feel like crazy escalation of like, where are we now? Who even is this douchebag? What, what is this game about again? I don't really feel like that's been a problem for Elder Scrolls at all because like people can just be like, it's about this. This is the guy, you know, 
we we know him. We know who he is. He was mentioned in this book, in this game. Somebody mentioned that it might be a problem. I, I might be misremembering, but I think the big wall of prophecy, at one point in Skyrim, an old, a blustering old man reads to you from a giant wall of big stone prophecies. Um, and I, and he mentions that, like, the giant dwarven brass god would have fallen by now. Um, and he mentions that, like, sorry, I'm just focusing in hardcore on this fight. Oh, let's swap weapons just so I can get something big off. Yeah. Or no, this one. You're the only guy fighting me, right? Um, I've destroyed the second of the Cursed Blades guarding Sankator, freeing his spare atop his companions left the Under King's enchantment from the Shrine of Tiber Septum. I should search for the other two. The Under King is the quote-unquote villain of Daggerfall. We'll get into that and what that means later. Okay. Wow, it is loaded in here, fellas. I'm all shot. I can't think, I can't focus, I can't do it. All right, all right, let's save here, huh? Let's get some more slurping. Um. But yeah, like the plot of Daggerfall is there's going to be a new god that someone's trying to make. The plot of um, Morrowind is someone's trying to become a new over god and become the new reality. Uh, and granted, you know, Dagarthur's plan is a little more complicated than that, and it requires more understanding of. Uh, more understanding of. Elder Scrolls lore to even understand what he's doing. But like, I'm going to become a new god. I'm going to become a new god and use it to overwrite all of reality. Oh. Ghost. I know you. You Whoa. freed me. Free my brothers if they are still enslaved. Together we will cleanse the shrine of the Underkings, foul magic. Cool. Loud and clear, bro. Um, yeah, this is a, th it's a, it's a thing of like, sorry, I was going through the plans. Become a new god, become a new god and overwrite reality. And then in Skyrim, it's, I already am a god, I'm gonna destroy reality. Wait, go back. I don't know how to get out of here. Sankator Catacombs. Can I get out of here? I was hoping that this wouldn't happen because I didn't want to... Oh, it's scary down there. <laughs> Look, I don't have a fear of underwater stuff like some people do. I know that it's like 
one of those like semi common fears of like being afraid of, of water monsters and stuff like that. I don't have that, but like sometimes when I can't see the bottom of a of a deep thing of water and it's dark, I'll get a little frightened, I'll admit it. It's scary down there. What enemies? Alright, what is this? All of judgment. Okay, so this is new. Um So yes, we were talking about the plan. Become a new god, become a new god and override reality. I already am a god and destroy reality is Skyrim's plan. But in this one it's like I'm gonna take over this area. Like granted, by area it is a plane of reality, but it's not all planes of reality. Like the other things in the other Elder Scrolls games are all multiversal concepts and multiversal villains. Whoa. Paralysis, I guess. Something like that. Yeah, those are all multiversal concepts and villains. This one is, you know, he's from another dimension, yeah, but he's just coming to this one. Catacombs. Wait, is this where I was? No, this is new. I'll go ahead and do it. Let's uh let's do something else on him. Skeletons hate fire. Whoa. What are you swinging around, Montrer? Oh, this is a mundane weapon, so it can't attack that ghost. <sighs> That's alright, there's some strength in mundanity. A lot of strength, I would argue. I have a sorcery, yeah. I might have less than 100 sorcery, which would mean that that's a bit of a waste, but that's okay. Ow. Yeah, all right. Do my pew pews. The third of the cursed blades guarding Sankator. Destroy the last of the cursed spirits. Now, he had a good weapon on him. I think, at least. Hmm. Here it is. North Wind. Take one, leave one. Frost damage. That's nice. That's a really nice weapon. Magicka damage, I'll admit, is a little situational, uh, shall we say? Where did I come from? Hall of Judgment, right? Yeah. Okay, so this would be new, right? There were more areas in Hall of Judgment that I didn't go through, but maybe this is something else. Why would he be going this way? This leads down. I guess it resists frost because it can't feel cold being dead and all. Um, but yeah, it's weird to talk about where, like, this is, like, technically lower stakes than the other ones, but, like, especially with, uh, the depiction of Merun's Dagon, like, he shares name with a, uh, Cthulhu Mythos deity, and he looks like a Satan. Like, he just looks like a generic, like, devil guy. 
Um, as far as I remember, at least. Let's get some slurp, huh? All right. But yeah, I'm perfectly content with um like the stakes of this game. Like I just want to air out the fact that I'm like this is a weird way to put this, but this is technically lower stakes than all the other games. But there's no reason that that should be a bad thing. In fact, I think it's a good thing. Um that's all I wanted to really say this this game this episode. So I'll cut it here. I've been Alfred. This has been Oblivion. Uh, episodes and uploads in general will become spotty for a bit. Thank you for the patience. Uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.